Hi, I'm John at Greybeard 3D, and today we're going to be moving the MMU2 over to a Mark 3S. Uh, I originally put it on a Mark 2.5, uh, but since uh, I have a new 3S, I'm going to go ahead and move it over to the newest printer and uh, get rid of the Mark 2.5. So let's go ahead and get started. So again, welcome back. Um, let's look at these these uh, printers that I'm working with here. So here we have the 2.5 with the uh, MMU 2 on it. And over here we have the Mark 3 S that we're going to be placing the MMU onto. Uh, with this process, the first thing we're going to do, um, my apologies for that. Uh, with this process, the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and return the Mark 2.5 to stock. Um, when we put it back to stock, uh, it's going to, uh, we'll go ahead and flash it with the new firmware and everything else. It should be a relatively quick process. And then uh, step two of this is putting the MMU2 onto the Mark 3S. Um, they do say it's a MMU2S is available. I do have that upgrade. Uh, however, the only real change with it is just the new extruder mount. Um, nothing else about the MMU unit itself has really changed. So let's go ahead and get started with that. All right, so here we have the uh, extruder unit with the MMU2 line coming into it. We're going to go ahead and put the um, regular pieces back onto this, this unit and unhook this line. Uh, you might need to loosen this first with a wrench, but uh, this is only finger tight, so I'll go ahead and take that off. Looks like there's a little extruder string in there. And... Um, Using the 2.5 uh, Allen wrench, we're able to remove these two screws. You could leave uh, this top plate in place. Uh, it's not very different from uh, the regular one. It just has the uh, brass uh, inset in it. We'll PTFE tube back. We'll go ahead and put that in here. And go ahead and put that down on there. <clears throat> when I made this... Uh, upgrade to the 2.5. I decided to print a bunch of the parts in the orange. Um, so that has worked out uh, nicely. Um, so it, this is a, a bit more orange than is usually on the unit. So uh, so that's the only changes we really need to make to the extruder. Okay, so this right here is the back of the MMU2 unit. Uh, we do have a single cable, which is going right into the top of the extruder here or to the uh, case here. Uh, so we need to remove or yeah, remove this wire from the case. We'll go ahead and start with removing this screw. Uh, this holds the front of the case uh, closed. And that should be it. In there, uh, that huge mess of wires is uh, what we're dealing with. So we do need to um, disconnect <clears throat> this line uh, from everything here. Uh, we can see coming out of here is, um, uh, that's one connector. That just kind of came right out. That was uh, kind of weird. No problem, though. And then the other connector is way inside, and it probably has a, a quick release of some sort. So I'll try to get you a better shot of that. So this is the connector we're trying to get to in there. And uh, yeah, my, my big hands will be in the way as I try to get, get this out. So what it looks like is uh, it is connected to the block, perhaps. So we're pulling it all out. So there we go. Um, so yeah, it looks like it's connected into the block here. And that's uh, brought over with a jumper. Um, I did this uh, connection a long time ago, so I don't remember all of this. But um, it looks like we can just go ahead and take this jumper right off of there, and we are now disconnected. And then from here, we can plug these back in. Um, and they should go back into their, their spots. As you can see, it's very tight uh, quarters inside the case of a, a Prusa. So, 
but both of those are seated in there now. And let's go ahead and try to close this up. So I'll get this back in position. And we'll go ahead and close these down. Just try to be as neat as possible with the cabling. Okay, that's all closed down. Uh, now for this, uh, this should just lift right off of the top of the printer. I don't think there's any uh, zip ties or anything. Let's uh, back you guys up a little bit. There we go. We'll try to get this off. And that's the MMU unit. Go ahead and pull that aside. And we will look at uh, flashing the firmware on the printer uh, back to the factory. And we have our USB cable going to our computer to go ahead and get this started. So here we are on the Prusa website. We're going to drivers firmware uh, download. We don't want to go to the software page. It actually is a little bit harder to navigate. So scroll down and we're finding the Mark 2.5 because that's what we're dealing with here. Uh, and firmware 3.71. We'll go ahead and download that to our uh, computer. All right, now we'll open up the slicer. Uh, those are the parts I downloaded for uh, printing for the Mark III. Uh, but in our slicer, we can go ahead and flash our firmware. And we'll do that by going up to the uh, uh, configuration and uh, flash firmware at the bottom of the menu. Uh, we'll browse for our file. Oh, I, I gotta unzip the file first. So I unzip the file and we'll browse for it. And let me switch the view over to list all the different, um, so we can see all the, the full file names. And you'll see all the files here. We have all kinds. And unless you have an older uh, Mark II, uh, you're gonna need the Rambo 1.3. And you'll also notice the files have, they're all English, but they have a secondary language. Um, I usually pick the uh, ENCZ. And uh, so once you pick it, uh, we can go ahead and open that up. And in here, you want to make sure that it does say the Mark 2.5 and go ahead and hit the flash button. Uh, this can take a little bit, uh, just give it some time and we'll have this flashed in no time. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward now. All right. We're up, Mark 2.5, okay. We can go see um, which version we're on. We're on 2.7.1. Uh, it doesn't tell you that you're loaded on the um, uh, regular Mark 2.5 or if you're on the MMU, as far as I know. I don't see anything about that. So we'll go with this. And let's go ahead and say, okay, um, maybe a print from SD. And we'll try this one. So we just want to see if it's going to heat up for us. I, I guess there's a self-test we could run instead if, if we want it to. Um, we should see the cooling fin come online and a few other things happen as well. Um, I do have a mark on my bed. Let me see if I can show you this. This is from uh, doing the little Marvins, uh, maybe a little bit too close to the bed on one of them, trying to get this thing to stick. So it says bed heating, and then it'll say heating briefly, which means it's heating the hot end, but because the hot end is faster than the bed, it'll just start. So there it says heating, and then it should just start. Whew, listen to that rattle. Oh, let me lift this for you. So this is the new uh, homing procedure. Um, this is still 3x3, three three, but it's so much faster than it used to be. But this appears to be working fine. I see the extruder motor is turning. Uh, the bed's moving. Everything heats up. Um, it's following its process. So we'll go ahead and cancel this. So let's go back down here. Stop the print. Yes. And that's it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get set up because the next pro part of this process is to get the um, Mark III uh, set up with the MMU2. So uh, we have the Mark III over here and we're ready to start this process. And 
the first part about this process is they want you to kind of like loosen everything up so you can get more slack on the uh, sensor cable. And there's the sensor cable right there. Uh, so we're trying to get more slack on that. So uh, first part of that is to kind of open up the control unit. And inside here, uh, you can see it's also uh, quite messy. Uh, but inside here is our uh, cable to the uh, filament sensor. And that's what we're trying to get slack out of. And to do that, they want you to remove any zip ties that you might have in there um, and also loosen up the uh, bundle um, up here. Let me adjust that for you. So we'll go ahead and remove these screws. Uh, then they want you to remove any of these zip ties that you might have. We're only going to remove the ones that connect to the top. So there's five zip ties in, in total here. Uh, there's three up here and then there's two below. We only need to move the, remove the three up here because they're the only ones holding the bundle going to that. So all three of those are cut. We don't actually need to pull those out. We will have to anyway to uh, replace it, but we have that. Uh, let me check the instructions because next we need to remove four specific screws. So, yeah. So what we have here are these two, and let's see, release all four screws, but keep them in the printed part. This one in the middle, and one at the bottom, and one at the bottom here. And this really is just a plate, um, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, it does help provide some support, but um, everything is still held uh, with the zip ties on the bearings. Um, and the zip ties on the bearings helps too. So these are good. We'll keep these screws in here like they suggest. Let's see if I can do that. I can't do that. So they want you to move it back just a little. Just like so. Just to kind of lo loosen it up. Now they want the top cover to come off. The top cover is held on with a screw up here. The filament sensor, let's see if I have that size on hand. No, oh, that's too small. And that's too big. So that's a 2 oh, what was this one? Wow, a 1.3. Here's a 1.5. Okay, that might be it. So, let's see how you guys look on the screen. So, here we go. This is a 1.5 millimeter. Now, you want to be very careful because we are reusing the sensor. We don't want to damage it in any sort of way. And I'm trying to get it to... There we go. Okay. And we'll, I'm just going to go ahead and lift it and then unhook it and set it aside. I don't really need it on there right now. All right. Let's rotate this around so I can show you the two screws that we need to remove up here. So there are two screws right inside there. It's very hard to see, uh, but there's a screw right here. And there's one screw just on the other side of the motor, too. I should see if they want them all the way out. So they do have specific instructions for these screws. If you take them out too far, uh, the whole thing can kind of fall apart on you. All right. So the top screw they want removed. They do also want this screw over here uh, re completely released uh, because we do need to change that cover anyway. Uh, and then, um, yeah. Unplug the hour sensor. Right. And the front ones that I was I was kind of going to town on, they only want these released. And I'm glad I checked. They only want these released a few turns. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten it all the way back up and then uh, turn it back a few turns. So... All right, and then finally they want the fan right here uh, removed. 
that was that. Yeah, you can kind of see everything in here is kind of getting loose. I think that's the uh, goal here, is just to kind of make everything uh, loose. This one's extra long because it goes to the uh, part cooling fan as well. And I'll shove it up there to have the gates belts help. Um, there's a screw right in here behind the heat sink, and there's one on the other side too. And they want that just a few turns. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So, and this is right behind this probe. It really helps if you have the ball end uh, type of uh, hex wrenches. Uh, they want the one on the left. They want this completely removed because it holds this door on. And we're changing that door. Um, and then this one, they just want it released uh, slightly to create a slight gap. So, and the reason we're loosening all these screws, but not fully, is just so we can kind of pull this cable to the IR sensor uh, without um, causing any damage or strain on the cable. And we're just going to try to pull it all the way through the slaving here uh, into uh, farther into the extruder. All right, so this is pretty much free. And there we go. And this one will turn like two or three turns. There. So, using the smallest Allen key, grab and pull the adapter printer part out. Okay, so up in here, they want this piece out. So, they want us to find a small Allen wrench and just kind of try to lift it out. A little bit harder than it seems. <laughs> quite possible I'm just I didn't loosen up everything enough for it to come out uh, like we would think so let me see if I can work on that uh, with both hands and uh, hopefully get this out Uh, in the instructions, they have a comment section, and uh, if you read the comment section, uh, you can see if other people have trouble and then find solutions to it. Yeah, so every, there's several other people having a similar problem with this. Uh, what I'm going to try to do is loosen up this screw a little bit more uh, to make this maybe a, a little bit easier. We're getting somewhere now, guys. Yeah. I'm under it, but it's still it's still being quite difficult to get out here. Whew. So there we go. All right. There's the steel ball. You, uh, I mean, you don't really want to lose it. You don't need it anymore, but you don't necessarily want to lose parts. And all of that was to put a replacement part in that doesn't have a steel ball. So go figure. Okay, extruder idler disassembly. That's where we have to take this thing apart. This is a pain in the ass too, because this little pin in there likes to crack the, um, likes to crack the assembly when it's inserted. And uh, it is very tight. So removing it might be difficult. Uh, what I'm going to do is see if I have an Allen wrench that I can kind of press on um, because this is a proper way to use a tool and push that pin out. I'm going to use a smaller one. I don't want to damage the bearings inside, so I don't want to use anything that might be thicker than the pin. And there went the pin. So there are two bearings inside of this. You want to be very careful when handling it because they will fall out on you and you could lose them. Um, and losing the pin is also not a good idea. So let me try to find that. Okay, I found the pin and I also managed to find uh, M310, a square nut, and two regular nuts. 
So uh, that's how much uh, this carpet does suck up parts. Uh, these parts I do not believe are magnetic at all. I used a big collection of buckyballs and uh, yeah, they're just barely magnetic, but the pin fortunately is. Um, but yeah, I was on the square nut is. So it was quite a challenge down there. Uh, the big collection of buckyballs helps because the, I can spread them out into a much wider area. All right. Uh, the next step is just to see if we can pull uh, a little slack out of this cable. Uh, hopefully we have things loose enough that this works. So that does not feel like it's pulling easily. So we're going to go ahead and loosen this just a little bit more. And hopefully not cause any uh, significant looseness out of this. So, there we go. And we want to check inside there and make sure that we're not pulling anything in here too tight either. Which I think might be this one here. So, but we have it. We have a lot of length up there. Let's go to the next step. <clears throat> so, I'm using the uh, manual for the M the uh, MMU2S upgrade. Uh, so, first thing we need is we need our adapter assembly. I think if you buy f the brand new MMU kit, uh, it'll come with this pre-printed in orange. But we're just going to use this for for what we're doing here. And try to get this adapter in there. I think I see why this thing is so difficult to kind of remove. This little triangle bit. There's just not enough slack in here. Damn it. Let's try again. It's almost like we need this screw to separate just a little bit more, but I'm worried about separating the whole case here. So I'm going to back this screw out while holding on to the extruder. There we go. And tighten that back down a little bit. We don't want to tighten it all the way because we do need to get the uh, cable through still. So um, it is aligned. You do want to make sure that this is flush. We're flush. Pretty good. Okay. IR sensor part preparation. So we need... Um, let's do this. We need this part here. Uh, we need this panel. Uh, we need this thing that came with uh, the upgrade kit and it would also come with a brand new MMU. Uh, and then we need a, a 10. All right, so Prusa comes with a nice little bag of spare parts, um, which is very helpful. Uh, and I think this is only if you buy the kit version. If you buy the pre-assembled, I don't know if you get spare parts. Um, I would say with the way they do their upgrades, you would think that they would want to include uh, spare parts with either. So let me get this up here. So we're trying to get this in, into that, but uh, I think I have a little bit of excess plastic in there uh, from when I printed it. So I'm just going to poke it out with a uh, tool. I did print these uh, with support, touching build plate only, um, so I, I do have a little bit of uh, excess material in there. Okay, now it wants us to take the filament sensor and connect it up to the board. You can see the clip is up, the black part is down, the actual sensor is down. So the next thing we need to do is go ahead and place this um, sensor into the top here and so we'll go ahead and do that and then want the cover on top so the cover is this little black piece here let me make sure you're on screen here and the cover actually is um, uncentered uh, if that makes any sense so it's uh, the hole is closer to one side than the other and you just want to make sure you get it right 
so it looks like it's that and with that stay in place cover then they want this uh, tiny screw to go back in and this is the screw that we used originally uh, or that was being used originally to hold the filament sensor in place on the uh, original extruder come on We want to tighten this down. We don't want to kill it. So, there we go. We're good to go. And if you see in there, and I, I know this is probably not... Let me switch to this uh, view here. So, if you see in there, those pieces are the actual filament sensor. And you can see it's right aligned in the middle of that. And that's what we're going to be... Um, breaking with the new piece so you're breaking the beam of light or uh, and that's how it's detecting if something is there okay it wants the wire fed in this channel here right underneath so okay make sure it's all the way in well it's it's in but it's not really wanting to stay but it's there all right so with this they want a uh, m3n Good thing I found one on the carpet. Um, and it looks like it gets inserted right here. And I like to use uh, a screw for this. And I just tighten this down to pull the nut into the uh, cavity. There we go. So it looks like this is going to go right on top of this. Let's see, maybe something like that, looks like that's how it goes. Secure both parts using M32 screws, or M310s, so. Let's so use M310, but it's not quite fitting. Make sure it's pushed together really tight. There we go. Boy, it's not a lot of thread that's gripping there. Probably should be like M312. All right, slide the holder on the cover. Okay, that's all good. Let's see, I bet you there's comments about that screw not being long enough. Yep. So if you read the comments, the M310 screw wasn't reaching the nut for me. So it is very close to barely making it. Uh, you might want to use an M312. Um, however, 12 might be a little too long. Uh, you might need to put um, like a little uh, hole right there. Just a little depression so the uh, 12 can fit uh, right where it would hit. So uh, yeah, it does look like other people have the exact same problem. Okay, place the RF sem sensor assembly on top of the extruder. Okay, we've done that. I, I feel like I'm, I'm uh, in spies like us setting off the uh, Russian thing. Align the left edge with the extruder body. Use an M318 uh, to join it all together. So that's where this 18 comes in play. And that is going right through the top of this. And probably, yeah right into the top of the extruder. Okay. There we go. Looks like our length of wire is just about perfect too. We don't really have a lot of slack here now, now that it's all put back together. You want to you want to make sure this loop here isn't going to strike your frame up here. Uh, so double check that. And then this looks like it's going almost straight down. Um, we can pull a little bit of the slack out of the line by pulling on the cable from inside the case and just to kind of get some of that slack out. You can see it kind of move. But it's still not, um, it's not overly tight. When I touch it, it does uh, wiggle just fine. And they want this M340 to be tightened up. Okay, 
make sure all the gaps are gone. So they just want you to check the sides of the uh, motor and the extruder assembly and make sure there's no gaps there. Then it looks like they want us to turn it around and start to tighten everything else back up too. Let me get my ball head. So first they want these two in here tightened. Then they want the two inside tightened. Okay. Everything's looking good. And then they want the fan put back in place. And just keep an eye on your cables, because like the motor cable here or something could could have slipped behind it, and you could be pinching it, and you just want to make sure that you're not doing that. So let's go ahead and prepare this new door. We have our rod, we have our um, gear, and the gear uh, does have the two bearings inside of it. Um, I get a little funny about this. They also want you to prepare the spring, but we already have that in our extruder since this is a uh, this was already built and everything else. So they want the bearings put in, but we're good there. They want a M3 square nut. So what we'll do is we'll harvest it out of this one because I, I do like to uh, save any hardware I can. So we'll just use a, a screw to help us pull it out. And we'll use, maybe we'll just use the same screw to put it back in. So my other trick is just to screw it in with a 10 millimeter. And it should suck it right in there. Support material be damned. There we go. Almost lost that to the carpet. Okay. Then let me get my orientation right. Looking at it like that, they want the um, the gear on the uh, left side here, and they want us to put the pin in. Now this is usually tricky. Uh, putting this pin in without breaking the part, especially if you print it at home. I don't know why, but these things love to break on me. It's probably the, uh, the way I do it. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can choose not to do it my way if you want, or you can break your own pieces. Actually, I use this old extruder cover to press onto. There we go. So I pressed it in and we'll press it the rest of the way. And with that, uh, maybe I will even, I use the tip of a screw because it has, it's almost concave and it pretty much grabs, um, pretty much grabs the end of that. Uh, so it doesn't really slip that much. This is the other trick with it. If you push it too far, uh, it sucks because it doesn't, the length of the rod uh, is actually a little bit too short for the, uh, the actual length of the unit. Uh, so if you push it too far, there won't be enough on this side. And if you don't push it far enough, there's not enough on this side. So you, uh, you don't have a very stable uh, gear there. And this is one of the most important parts of a printer. It sure doesn't want to go much farther. getting it in there and I think I have it far enough in here yeah let me see yeah so I'm halfway so I'm good so just want to make sure this moves it moves fine we have our screw in place let's move on to the next step okay we need our long screw 
this is something we removed before. And let me turn the printer and align the camera for you. All right, so this goes up in here, sort of like this. And that is what breaks the, uh, the beam for the filament sensor. And this is going up in there. And I'll pull this away a little bit. We'll see how it looks. Okay. So we're just going to get this kind of put back in place here. There we go. It's starting to line up again. Now, I tightened that up quite a bit. Uh, we might not actually want that. I do apologize for my dog, dog barking there. Ooh, is that a longer screw? So we'll tighten up the screw in the back of holding the, it connects to the door here. All right, so you wanna kind of feel it. It should be slightly less than uh, flush. So uh, you can see we have the thread over here. And do I have any filament? So when filament goes in though, um, it should be pushing on this arm and this, or actually it should be pushing on the gears and the, when it spreads for the gears, this arm is gonna break the, uh, uh, the beam for the filament sensor. So let me go find some filament. All right, so I have some black amethyst from Snow Labs. It's a very pretty purple. Just throw it up there for now. It's also uh, so the end of a filament that uh, was previously uh, down the extruder tends to be a little uh, uh, brittle after being that close to a heat source. Yeah, so once I go in there, I can see the screws turning. There. So with the filament in. Let's see if I can show you this. Focus. It's not very much, but this thing moves. This arm moves just a little bit when filament is in there. And when I pull filament out, the arm comes out. And that's really what's happening. Okay, they want the back of this to be retightened, reassembled. So that's these screws here. And if you're in any doubt, go back through all your screws. Make sure they're all tight. Ooh, that jumped. There we go. Let's see. You guys got a good view on this? Sections of this. So. Uh, here we go. Let's get this last one in. I believe it's right there. I know it's kind of dark. I think back here is black. It's hard to see it all. But the instructions online are really good, and I'm just following the uh, standard instructions here. Um, I'm not going to assemble the new, um, uh, what are they called, the buffers. I'm not going to bother assembling those. Uh, on the stream or maybe not ever because my uh, feed solution is working fine and now we get some fun to re-zip tie some stuff here um, yeah I sure don't need three zip ties So I'm just putting them exactly in where they were, pulling them through, come on. These don't need to be killer tight, I just, you just want them to be kind of decent. Um, you want the tops to be up here and not to the side or anything that might hit the frame uh, while it's trying to home. So let's go ahead and clip these. Cool. 
Uh, then we have to, I assume, tighten this thing back up. Uh, so we'll put this back in place. And I remember this thing was always a pain. Uh, it likes to tend to um, pinch the sheathing. And if it pinches the sheathing, you're not going to be able to get it tight enough. And if it's not tight enough, the door won't close all the way. So you really want to kind of watch your sheathing while you're doing this. Make sure everything is in there. Okay, and we have this in there. Now, we should be good with this back in here. The way they do the MMU, uh, we end up cutting a little bit off of the case or the door or something. Yeah, it looks like a little bit off the door. They want this cut. Uh, so that's probably what's coming next. Let's see. So they want you to remove this door. I'm a little bit too lazy for that. So I'm just going to cut it in place. And let's see if I can show you. I'm just going to cut off that much and see if it's enough. And if it's not, I'll come back and cut some more. There we go. It's cut. Um, they want you to remove the door for that. And I just... I'm just a little bit too lazy to do that. And I'm going to put the MMU unit on top. Let's see. So that goes around. And this just clamps down. Come on. There we go. Almost lost a finger. But that's all right. And then we can see, okay, will this thing close with that in place? And it looks like it's a yes. So we're good. Um, good there. That's all there. Connecting the electronics. So looks like that this one is going to go. All right. This is for the Mark 3S. So these instructions could be different depending on what you're hooking it up to. But it looks like it's going to be going inside this box. Uh, there is, you see the orange connector in there. Um, let me make sure that's right. You see that little bit of orange in there. Um, it's actually, there's a cable going into it. That's our filament sensor already. And this one is going right above it with the brown wire on the left. So it just fits right above it. It's kind of a tight squeeze. Uh, if you've wired a motherboard before, this is going to be very similar <laughs> to uh, getting all the uh, front panel pins uh, and lights and buttons hooked up. You're just kind of squeezing everything in place. So there we have it um, with the brown wire on the left. Let's go ahead and get back to the instructions here. All right. so. For the power, it looks like they want this actually screwed together. I might have a little bit of a problem here. Uh, when I got this, it's like it's made specifically for the um, uh, Mark II. So it's possibly a different power wire. There might be a chance they gave me both power wires. So I'm going to go check my box and see if I have the actual power wire for the Mark III. Um, because it might be different. So... I'll be back. Okay. I found my power wire. Uh, yeah, this is probably what I originally came with. Uh, so with that, I am going to have to kind of take a little bit of the unit up here apart. Um, I definitely need to get this wire out. So it looks like at least those two zip ties uh, need to come off. So we'll start there. Uh, depending on how you zip tied yours up, uh, it could be different. And my MMU is an upgrade from the MMU uh, 1, so your wires might not be that long. Uh, they did not ship us new motors with shorter wires, so it's what we had at the time. One more zip tie. Kind of hidden up there. Let me try to get that a little higher for you. Okay. So using a flathead, we're going to go ahead and remove the old power wire. So we just pushed on the little tab that's holding it in place to loosen it up. 
we have this. I want to get this out of the textile sleeve. It might be easier to remove everything, but we'll just go ahead and do this. Let's get the new power wire in place. <clears throat> just going to hook it up to the exact same spot. You heard the click. Click is good. And we just want to get this wired in. That's a good question. Eh, that should be fine. Yeah, these textile sleeves are a little bit a little bit of a pain. But once you get them on, they're fine. They're just uh, sometimes a little bit difficult to feed wires into. So I'm just working my way down this uh, sleeve to get this new wiring. Right now I'm just trying to get it in, and then once it's in, you want to kind of twist your power wire around, or your, um, sorry, your sheathing around, and that's going to just kind of make sure that um, the wires, you're not actually twisting the wires inside, or you don't want to be actually twisting the wires inside, but See how when we lift this, we can still see the red one, but we don't see the other one. And what we're trying to do is get both of them inside of this um, inner sheath. And by twisting it around, it can help uh, help alleviate that or help to get them fed in. And this should be the same technique you used when you uh, built the printer. Now the fun task. We need to get these hooked up. Um, and I believe you can use either one, um, either one. So what we're going to do is put the printer on its PSU side. Woo, there goes the MMU. Slide the bed back for a little balance on the whole unit. And we should be good. And we're trying to get them hooked up right here. And I notice now I need a um, Phillips head screwdriver to get to that. Um, so, okay, so, uh, these are our wires here, the MMU, uh, we want to power up with a printer or to control with the printer, which would be fine. Uh, let's see where they want the wires hooked up. I believe it's either pair. Add it to the first two clamps from the left. Okay, so they really want it um, there. Uh, so, and the other thing they want you to make sure is, you see how these have little uh, uh, lifts on them? Let me make sure I'm on screen here. So these have little, let me put it against the black maybe, little bends in them. They want those bends facing outward, uh, not inward. So they do actually want this, the first two on the left, which uh, are going to be these two right here. So they want to hook to the same terminals as those. Uh, I'm not sure why it matters, but uh, we'll go ahead and do it the way they want. Um, it's going to be cramped quarters in here again. I'm going to try to get you a decent view of this. Let's see what I can do here. Yeah, that's going to be tough, but uh, let's see what I can do uh, to get this wired up. So, first things first, loosen up these screws. I'm going to make them really loose uh, just to make my life easier. And then this screw here. So I'm just loosening the two screws t to those two wires I pointed to. And uh, now that they're loose, we're going to go ahead and slide the uh, MMU wires into it and I'm going to go behind these ribbon cables and these other cables I don't want them really in my way I don't want to loop the bed cable by accident I don't want any of that and try to validate that everything is hooked up correctly.
Hmm. Not sure I'm happy with that. Okay. So, let's try it one more time. It's just hard to get in there. Uh, it's really hard to kind of get to what you need to in here. So, I'll start with disconnecting the red one. Um, and seeing if that's lined up right. Sorry about this uh, camera, guys. The, uh, <laughs> the PTFE tubes from the MMU are just... Um, Kind of like this giant octopus that's trying to absorb the camera. Let me see if I can shove it in there. Uh, that is a good way to hold your PTFE tubes. All right. So. It appears I just didn't have these screws loose enough. And you definitely want to get these tightened the right way. Um, if you don't have them tightened the right way because you are also piggybacking on existing power wires, um, you could cause uh, current problems, uh, maybe even some resistance and some melting. So uh, getting that back the right way is very important. Okay, make sure all our wires are still hooked up. We have been fiddling in here a lot, so we don't. We want to make sure there's nothing in there that's... Uh, uh, disconnected on us or anything like that. Um, try to route this thing to the left here. So we have this new cable up here and all our existing cables are in there. And let's see. There we go. The box is closed up. I wonder if I should have updated the firmware prior to um, hooking it up. Who knows? Um, this happens when you don't read the instructions all the way. Okay, so uh, the last step obviously is to hook this back up um, into the top here. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and flash this firmware. So I'll switch over to the uh, computer screen again so we can walk through that. It's the exact same process as before. The real trick is just picking the right firmware for your printer. So, come on. So with this big tower here, it's a lot harder to screw this in. You might want to find a wrench. All right. Yeah, the MMU is probably not happy at all. Okay, uh, we are booted, but uh, again, we're on the wrong firmware. So let me switch to uh, my desktop again. You can hear the MMU trying to do something here. All right, we're back on the Prusa site, and we want to scroll down until we find the Multimaterial 2S. Um, and then that's the firmware we're going to download. And it's going to include the software for both um, the printer and for the MMU uh, unit itself. And then we're going to switch back over to our slicer. Um, go ahead and unzip our new file. And once it's unzipped, we can see all the files it contains. And in there you can see, okay, yes, it contains the hex file for the Mark 3S, but it also contains all the other files for the uh, Mark 2.5 as well. And then at the bottom, um, it has the uh, MMU uh, 1.05 update, and that's for the actual MMU unit on the top of the machine. So uh, we're going to go back into our uh, configuration menu and go ahead and uh, choose to update the firmware. We can see it picked the right printer. We're going to browse and try to find our file. Um, uh, so we go back to our a new folder and we find the hex file at the top there which is for the Mark 3S. Uh, we pick that, we pick the other one and then we're ready to go. Uh, once, uh, now that this is flashing, I'm going to go find my cable for the MMU unit. It's actually a different cable so I'm going to find that and uh, we'll go ahead and flash the MMU unit. Okay, so we have the uh, micro USB wire hooked up into the MMU unit and we're going to go ahead and attempt to flash this as well too. So let me set this down for you. 
and we'll switch to our desktop. Okay, we're back into our slicer and we're going up to the configuration menu to uh, flash printer firmware. We're going to browse for our hex file and again this is for the MMU unit so we pick the 105 file. Um, you'll notice that uh, it no longer says a printer, it just says auto, um, but that's fine. And we go ahead and flash it and it flashes very quickly. And that's pretty much it. Uh, flashing the MMU unit is very fast. Okay, so we disconnect our cable from there and let's see if the unit shifts at all. So I told it to go to the next slot and I think what it's trying to do right now is just initialize itself. So there, I went to the next slot, slot number three, slot number four, slot number five. Okay. So that appears to be working. Um, with this as well, what we can do is, let me lower this even more. Uh, we can see if we can control any of it through here. So let's say um, load filament, and we will say load filament one. And when we do that, the MMU should shift to number one automatically. And, yep. It shifted over to number one. Now it's not actually going to be able to load number one. In fact, it's probably going to really get angry with me because I'm not going to give it one. Uh, but uh, as you can see, it is the printer is able to control the MMU unit, and everything seems to be fine. So I think at this point, this uh, upgrade is complete and successful. Uh, thank you everybody for watching this video. Uh, I'm going to try to edit this down, uh, remove some of the. Um, longer periods of time uh, just so you can have a succinct video on how to do this uh, transition from a Prusa Mark 2.5 over to a MM or over to a Mark 3 with the MMU2 unit. Uh, there is no real difference with the MMU2S and the MMU2. It's just simply the buffering system and the new S series printer. So that's it. Uh, I'm John at Greybeard 3D. Uh, please hit the subscribe button if you liked the video. Uh, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know uh, what you'd like to see next, uh, and also check out my website, graybeard3d.com. So, 